and my coffee. I'm going to try and not break things today like I have done in the past. Okay, so we're already live on YouTube, and we are now about to go live on Facebook. Here we go. Here we go. We're live. Hello, and welcome to the Feel Inspired Podcast, episode five. My name is Amit Soda. If you're coming across this for the first time, this is who I am. I'm the founder of uh, Feel Inspired. Place by the feeling they sometimes get when they read a quote or a piece of literature, a book, or hear a song, and they get that moment of inspiration that kind of you know, kicks them to a, another gear, if you know what I mean. Uh, and uh, so, yes, yeah, so welcome along. And I've got an amazing guest today. He's an incredible character. Uh, let me firstly just say he has a very sharp wit, or right, has to get ready for that. He genuinely is a top, top guy. But his story also is incredible. His, his journey to where he is now is amazing. And this is why I thought it was really worth getting him here today, because um i think in some ways what i would say is you've defied many odds uh and i'll just tell you a quick funny story as well this uh this young man sitting next to his name shami by the way shami kapoor uh, like the bollywood actor but he's uh he kind of approached me one day and said oh, i'd love to come and study your brain so if you can come into my office one day and you know he took me and he did all sorts of funny tests so i think i'm gonna get my payback today yeah uh so anyway so i would love to welcome this incredible gentleman shami kapoor ladies and gentlemen uh, uh and so i'll tell you what first things first uh as i generally like to do i'd love for you to tell while i get ready and just share the video a couple of times and things like that i'd love for you to tell everyone just kind of a two three minute sort of snapshot about who you are what you do and a very quick kind of overview of how you got from where you were and what where you were and how you got to where you are now all right first of all hello everyone um how are you feeling oh, Paul, as well and um so um, hi mom as in your yeah. Is. <laughs> oh yeah hi mom <laughs> yeah so um what can i say um, i pretty much started um here in, uh, pretty much i was born in london i grew up as an expat child in dubai um i i grew up as a child with autism basically what that means is my brain is wired differently i think differently i find it very hard to communicate and um so I grew up with all of the troubles associated with my condition. So um, school life was pretty much very hard. Um, my whole school life was pretty much, you know, being shown, being in a class, not knowing anything that was happening, sort of any, like if the teacher asked someone to do something or the class to do anything, I just would not know anything that was happened, anything that was happening. Um, long story short, um, when I was about 19 years old, uh, one of my clinical psychologists recommended me to a brain center in Dubai uh, where my life changed. Um, so it was a hobby. I went from someone who couldn't really remember one thing you would say to me. Now, if you want, you can give me 20 things at a time. I can remember them forwards, backwards as a list, however you like. And um, is that fine? Oh, oh, hang on a minute. We don't want that happening. Yeah, we don't want that happening. Fingers crossed. Is that, that fine? Is. is that okay? We're good. We're good. Still good. All sure. right. We're still that, here. When people do call, please yeah. no one call me right now. <laughs> yeah. No one call Amit. Zam, if you're watching, do not call me right now. Uh, anyway, yeah, carry yeah. on. Carry on. Luckily, we're still live, so we're good. We're okay, good. Carry awesome. on. Yeah. So then, um, and I went from someone who pretty much couldn't speak to one new person, but nowadays I can like speak to thousands of people on a stage, no problem. Ignore and, that. Um, carry on. Yeah, it's a lot of distraction, but it's fine. We're going to teach you how to um, pretty much deal with distractions <laughs> exactly, later on. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, I went to the center. They changed my life. And then I went back to university, eventually became an A student. And like that was pretty new to me. My life was pretty much, you know, um, like getting whatever work, not doing it, sort of going to an exam, failing. And that process would just repeat, get, getting moved from school to school all the time and <laughs> repeating as well i think <laughs> yeah I'd, yeah pretty tough and then um so then um yeah after so then after that um i, I like i couldn't just get on with my life like, i loved university but i thought i love getting a's and stuff for the first time ever but then i thought you know what um i want to go to that center and ask them for an internship because i want to learn what the hell happened like how the hell can you change my brain so much in like literally just six months of my life so then I asked that center for an internship 
eventually started to work for them. And then um, what was fascinating enough is that when I was doing my internship at that center, I could relate a lot to the clients that they had over there because um, I could really, you know, sort of figure out how you um, sort of navigate any sort of cognitive difficulty, like from first hand. So a lot of clients there, they pretty much, you know, like, like I had a special bond with a few of them and I just loved doing that internship. So then, um, long story short, I asked them um, that center, you know, um, how do I go amongst the route of launching my own center? And luckily enough, they pointed me in the right direction. And then, um, I, long story short, I launched my own center in Dubai in about 2015. And then um, Dubai and the UAE uh, in a pretty intense competition on a stage where there was 12 entrepreneur finalists battling it out. And I was honored to you know, be crowned UAE champion, eventually represent the country in Canada, in Toronto in 2018. And um, simultaneously, while all this was going on, um, Let's just see, I had to visit, and I just really wanted to get involved with it over here. So I launched a center with the help of family and a few friends in Rickmansworth, and then we eventually launched in Harrow, and now we're helping people in London as well. So yeah, long story short, I run centers which um, help anyone enhance their brain's core ability, whether they want to increase their focus, their memory, or their productivity, or their decision-making. Yeah. Wow, that's good introduction. You're really good. I love yeah. that. I love that. I think... You've uh, kind of alluded to this, and you're, we're going to go deeper into this as well, which is obviously increasing your brain's ability, for want of a better phrase, you know, increasing, I suppose you could almost say intelligence, depending on which way you look at it, um, looking to maximize what your brains can do. Because I think, uh, uh, and let's start here as well. So I love your take on this about the whole kind of idea that we only use very little our brain capacity as shown by several people like you look at people like who um one of the people i listen to as well as jim quick do you know jim okay, quick? Yeah. i love jim yeah, quick love him, yeah. amazing guy if you never heard of him i strongly advise you looking him up and looking at some of his talks incredible incredible individual very similar to you actually went, had a really nasty accident had learning difficulties and decided he wanted to prove the world wrong and uh, he went on to, and he coaches people like bill gates and you know an incredible amount of people on improving your brain your your memory your your brain deductive reasoning, deductive reasoning yeah, yeah all that kind of stuff so everything you know the full works um uh, and so i know there's some parallel there but um but okay so first question to you then as well so um are you a believer that we can, we have a lot more capacity than we actually use as in, I pretty much see this on a yeah, daily basis. So whoever comes to me, um, what we do is we basically see them, their brain at their core. And then all we do is, what we do is we tap weaknesses. So like if someone has a weakness, we just enhance them. So what would happen is someone who's thriving in life, they might have like five strengths, two weaknesses. All we do is we, en we enhance the two weaknesses. And then eventually it's kind of very difficult to, for them to have like daily hardships that they were going through. Like they just have a smoother journey along their ride. Um, so give, depending me, on their give me an example of some of these weaknesses, not just the two in your example, but, you know, things that you may encounter on a daily basis that, you know, that most people would, even in themselves, would find it as a kind of a, uh, a challenge, so to speak. Mm -hmm. They would think that that's them, that they're okay. stuck with it, that that is their limitation for yeah. life. That's the only options they've got. Mm -hmm. So give me some examples of what you you see you know, on a regular basis that you kind of myth bust for many people. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like just every daily complaint you can hear. Like, for example, if I and if I measure someone, they have like, let's say, five good areas, their weaknesses in logic, they might have difficulties in math or they might just be like, you know, the, the wife will handle the finances, you know, <laughs> yeah. I am not going there sort of thing, you know, <laughs> and then um, or anyone else. Like, for example, yeah. if it's a short term memory thing, what happens is people usually arrange their life to suit themselves where they don't have to, like... And tackle, yeah, you know, that's so true. Weaknesses. That's so, so true. So, but I love to, you know, bust that myth of, um, yeah, like, fixing a weakness. Because imagine this. Imagine if, okay, you had that excuse your whole life, you Can shifted I it. Pause you, know. right? We'll just come back to the, the one obvious thing. And this the reason I say this is because I do all the time. I'm not very good with names, mm -hmm. right? I bet you hear that one quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so carry on. Sorry. I just, yeah. That just popped into my head, and I thought so then, I'd say it before I forget yeah. it. So then, look, yeah, if we were to measure you, uh, if you if you came to me with a complaint um, of remembering names, I would imagine you have either auditory weakness or a memory difference or maybe a combination of the two. All we would do then is enhance them by 
targeted exercises which enhance each area. It's pretty simple. It's almost exactly like you go to the gym. Like, you know, if you go yeah. to the gym, they're like, okay, Shami, you have decent shoulders, good chest, your legs are weak, I'll work on your legs. Similar story. And then what happens when you work on your legs? All of a sudden, you know, you're going upstairs on a daily basis. You're no longer breathless, you know, because you've enhanced your fitness. Similar with the brain. Yeah. Uh, and that was obviously an example about you. Good shoulders, good chest, right? No, Just going to work on the legs, no. right? The right. shoulders were made for Bangla, yeah, baby. These are, these are solid shoulders, <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, no, okay, that's a, no, of course, naturally good example, right? We all know that we can improve our body in some way. But yet yeah, we think of our brain as a limitation in our sorts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think that this is so commonplace. Uh, I have to admit, I am totally gu guilty of this as well. That thinking, I, I put these limitations on myself, and I'm one of these people who will say I'm not very good with names. But the, ch the thing is, as well, deep down, I know the truth, and it's got nothing to do with the fact that I'm not good with names. That sometimes, firstly, I'm going to be right, brutally honest right now. That if someone isn't memorable to me, I'm not going to remember their name. Absolutely. Uh, if someone's memorable, I remember their name. Now, I know I have not trained myself well to remember names mm -hmm. in general, but mm -hmm. people will stick out. And there mm -hmm. are people who I will just, you know, mm -hmm. pass, pass off. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, one challenge I face is that, so I obviously, a lot of people know who I am, but I don't know who a lot of people are. So mm -hmm. they'll come up to me in the street and they'll go, hey, I'm mm -hmm. it, right? And you know, my mind won't even make that association of where I know them from, mm -hmm. what their name is. And I have to then do this little game with them, right? So I'm like, hey, how are you? Give my mind a few minutes to process mm -hmm. it, trying to think, right? And they're talking to me and I'm thinking, where do I know this person from? Where do, wh who are they, right? Sometimes I get it. Sometimes I don't. They Sometimes they pick up on it and they're like, you don't remember who I am, right? O occasionally they don't. I can fake it quite well. And then eventually it may come to me who this person is and I may kind of, and then, uh, and then I'll use a trick as well. If I don't remember their name, I'll say, oh, listen, I don't have your contact details. Put it, put it in my phone. Yeah, and I'll sure. put it in and yeah. suddenly I've got the name and everything. Yeah. I'm like, yes, thank God for that. Yeah. I didn't have to confess. I didn't know their name. So Yeah. So, <laughs> so lesson number one of today is make an impact and be remembered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of the first ebooks I wrote, uh, wrote was about how to be the chosen one or how to stand out from the crowd, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I think it's important, actually, as well. I think sometimes we don't make an impression. Like, yeah. you know, one of the first things yeah. I teach when it comes to dating is that don't be the kind of person who just does what everyone else does. Mm -hmm. Do something a bit different, you know, actually just even if you extend your sentence with a few words, you'll be in the top 1% of people to approach someone because you'll make an effort and you'll actually say something better than hey how are you doing mm -hmm. and you'll just be non-rememberable but if you actually say something di different you're going to stand out you're going to be the one who's remembered they're going to remember your name absolutely if you introdu introduce it in a funny way when i used to go to uh, speed dating events years ago i used to say things like you know uh, people ask you know, what do you do i'm like i'm the chief pie taster of mr kipling you know these people mm -hmm. do not forget me and they still i still occasionally mm -hmm. bump into people who are like oh you're the pie tasting guy and things like that right so you know it's you know that simple thing but Going back to the original point, so I th I think in some way I've probably had a bit of a limitation on myself saying in first instance, I'm not good with remembering names. And now do you kind of put that to people to firstly change their self-talk? Absolutely, yeah. Your self-talk or whatever your I would say, yeah, your identity is also a lot to do with your imagination. So whatever you imagine is pretty much um what happens anyway. So um a lot of it is yeah, your self-image. If your self-image is, you know, the guy who is bad at X, Y, Z, yeah, you're pretty much fulfilling. It's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy at the end of the day. So, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So let's talk more about these weaknesses then as well. So because I sidetracked you very slightly, but let's talk about some of these. Uh, what other common weaknesses do you see? Do you see in people? Okay. So um, actually, yeah, it's just every daily complaint you can imagine. So um, like, yeah, reading is a big, big one as well. So like, yeah. And people just want to come for fun as well to improve their IQ. Yeah. Yeah. A fun fact about our concept is that um, um, my, men our men my mentors basically in America, um, they released a research paper um, which says they get a 15-point increase in IQ. And then what happened was um, the U.S. government actually intervened. And um, they decided, you know, just to make sure that the numbers were correct, they wanted to do their own survey. And then, um, <laughs> so they decided to do their control group on about, they decided to do their own control group and their own sort of, um, just basically they did the experiment on their terms. And what they found is that about, out of, out of about 18,000 clients is that the control group got a 21 point increase in IQ. 
not 15. Oh, wow. so, yeah. okay. so you can imagine the possibilities in general, like for anyone when they can think faster, learn easier and perform better. Yeah. Um, I like to uh, the, basically there's no limit to where you can yeah. go with this and also a lot to do with, I would just say, yeah, your mind and body connection. Yeah, you know the two things about that, right? So as soon as uh, just we were downstairs in the kitchen, and as we were coming upstairs to the office, I even did it. I said to Shami, "Oh, let me check the door is locked because I have this really big paranoia now that I leave the door unlocked, so uh, I I forget if I've done it, and I have to do a double take, right?" Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the first point. Second thing was what you touched upon, which again I think is really fascinating, is that this idea that IQ is static that your intelligence, that you know, you, you've you been measured at some point in the past and mm -hmm. your IQ, let's say your IQ is 110 or something like that, then you're given the impression that that is your IQ, mm -hmm. that you can't improve it. It's going to be mm -hmm. like that for life until it degrades mm -hmm. and that's it. But obviously, again, that's not true. Yeah, we, You can train your brain. Yeah, we had um, someone who came to us about like quite a while ago and they wanted to, um, basically, they wanted to join the army, but then they have to do a lot of cognitive tests. But then what they found is that they didn't measure up like on the system, like however, psychiatric tests that um, he gave to the arm. And then um, after he left us, yeah, there was sort of no sweat. And on paper, he had about a good average 20% improvement in all areas. Wow. That means, yeah, you could be 50 up in one, 10% in another. But overall, there was about a 20% improvement. Overall, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. I think to think that you could do this um, at probably at any, would you say anyone could do this at any stage? I would say anyone at, after seven years old, yeah. <laughs> but um, I would say that the adults get bigger gains because they take it way more seriously. Like um, they've had a whole life of, you know, sort of hardship. They just want to get old on, you know? So, um, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I, don't get me wrong. Everyone gets large gains. Yeah, like, yeah. Our average is a three-year gain for kids and um, a 21-point increase in IQ for adults. So. I, I am fascinated with this idea of brain, brain plasticity, and that the, yeah. you know that we can mm -hmm. improve uh, our you know cognitive ability, uh, our ability to learn, to remember, to um, uh, to understand, to acquire new skills. I've always believed that we you know we have this capability. Uh, we say the training are able to help people in this. I know you give that one example mm -hmm. of the army person. Mm -hmm. You know, have you? What else have you seen through what you've done that's kind of changed people's lives and given them kind of a, you yeah. know, a, a, another dimension to themselves? Yeah, I would say, um, like my biggest passion is helping those, um, you know, with a similar background to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, similar background to me. So, um. Have a sip of tea, don't worry about it. We can pause. It's all yeah, right. it's fine. Um, yeah, so yeah. similar background to me, but my passion is basically getting someone who is incapable to eventually fishing for themselves and then eventually being employed for themselves. Like um uh, Ahmed once visited me in my in our office in Rickmansworth. I did. Yeah, I wouldn't mention his name, but he did meet someone there who was um, you know, like let's just say a good eight years or so behind his mental age, he was about 21 years old. And then it's just the biggest blessing to walk around Harrow and see him employed at one of the shops wow. in Harrow. So going from, you know, literally not being able to do anything to eventually living to eventually, you know, because um, like when I work with someone, I like to look at the whole 10 year ahead thing, not just, um, you know, get the results leave. So a lot of our surveys are based on, you know, um, yeah, results which are permanent. So on our surveys, we've, we've done... Um, pretty much um, surveys like one year after, two years after, three years after is probably coming out soon as well. And yeah, 2020, yeah. So and so you're gonna kind of be yeah. able to gauge then how many yeah. people have progressed? So that's one example of yeah, someone with learning difficulties. Another one would be, okay, we have um, a wealth manager. Mm, okay. but, uh, yeah, so um, no, he, uh, no, I love this guy. No, he helps, um, he even helps a lot of your favorite footballers okay. with their, um, their manager. Of, you know, you give uh, someone like 25 years old, like multi-million pound, um, like contracts, what are they going to do with their wealth? Where will it be in 10 years time? So he helps a lot of those people. So a lot of footballers as well. And then what happened is um, because of how much he's advanced in just by enhancing your brain, um, like his work has now given him five hats to wear. So like you get, you better be careful. You better be careful with this stuff. I, now I'm like asking him actually, like, I'm brain trained. You said like you get less workload. He's like, no, that's I'm the danger. Right? We should give it like a payment. 
caveat here yeah, that this could potentially you'd get more work, less pay, not my same pay, more work. Um, and actually, while we while we just were on that thought, just as well, we'll pause for a second and just let people know. Anyone watching, by the way, if you have any questions, perhaps you're struggling with a particular area of your memory, mm. your kind of, you know, it could be memory related, could be mm. just your brain, you're learning, you're trying to learn a new language, mm. whatever it might be, and you've got any questions for Shami, put them forward and I'll try and read them out a little bit later as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to address some of this as well, because mm. otherwise it's going to be me hogging him. So you feel free to go out, go out there. And oh, anyone listening to, to the recorded podcast, this is we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube as well. So we'll have these momentary pauses to ask these questions and so on and so forth as well. And so I, I think it's incredible. So talk, talk people through the process, right? They want to... They want to come to you. They say to you, "I, uh, I want to do better at work." You know, mm -hmm. what was the process? What do they need to do, and what would you do then to assess them? Yeah. So, um, what we do is, yeah, our assessments they pretty much measure all the areas which make up what you do on a daily basis. So the areas behind the areas behind the area. So it's pretty much the foundation of you. Um, so then, after that, you get a full cognitive report, and then it will show your strengths and your weaknesses, basically. And then what we find is that. Um, people and families like there's a massive like sort of aha moment now I get it now this explains everything um, especially when they go through the consultation and they see the results of their report it just yeah explains a lot of their daily frustrations nice sort of so I, I gather you don't do the, the standard test you did with me <laughs> oh no that was like for fun I invited yeah, yeah, Amit over using... like to pick his brains no because um, this guy fascinated him when I met him because um now it, let's just say he stood out. <laughs> at, at, um, I have no, no idea why. No, no, he, he introduced himself, you know, by juggling balls and stuff. And I just found that so cool. Oh, yeah. I remember. At the same time sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that, that was fun, actually. And that wasn't the only test he got me doing in there as well. Yeah, no. uh, I have got my, uh, you'll notice my juggling balls are always on my desk, as is my Rubik's yeah. Cube. Got my pack of cards over there. Oh, no. And he got me doing some really quite funky tests, actually. We'll talk about that in a little while as well. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so yeah, they've come to you now, and then what's the process for them to kind of then start making improvements? Is it kind of do they do it all with you? Can they go away and do stuff as well? It's a combination. Say, look, there are many things online, but I would say the ones that get the best improvements are probably face to face with a personal trainer. So they hold you accountable to your weaknesses. So yeah. like, like, I imagine like many people they have them um, sort of like apps on their phone, and apps they mainly focus on like just attention and just short term memory. We focus on all the areas which make up um, like the way you struggle. Like a lot of invisible areas as well, like sort of impulsivity. So people like who have a hard time like sort of waiting patiently or timing that part where it's bored. Yeah, it's basically we give, give you that broad mm. sort of overall improvement. Not nice. Just, not just in your attention and memory. And also on an app, what are you going to do on an app? When it gets hard, you're going to put it in your pocket. Whereas us, we're pushing you to push through your mental barriers. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're that accountable is, to your improvements. So that yeah. is actually quite true, actually. That yeah. yeah, people do do that. Actually, my wife and I were playing one of those you know brain training games. But to be honest, I didn't see any improvement in that one. I just thought, you know what? I think I needed a bit of time away from the phone screen. Full stop. I was <laughs> enough on the phone anyway. Uh, I mean, you know, unlike some people, right? I get my phone money's worth. Like I do everything on my phone in terms of mm -hmm. social media content, videos. Um, I'm currently something I've started this year. I'm learning Spanish at the moment as well. So I'm wow. using Duolingo and I'm learning Spanish. I'm getting better. Uh, hola. Uh, mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Shami uh, Kapoor uh, esta aquí. Uh, yeah. It took so me 26 years to learn English. So I'm going <laughs> to be doing this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do Hindi. I don't understand half the song. Mm -hmm. really is shameful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I think doing this away from the phone is probably a really good idea i think mm. it's not a bad idea just to put it aside and do something because mm. like, they yeah. do say as well actually the phone lowers your iq yeah. just because it steals your attention yeah. uh so i don't know if you saw that one twin institute no. you, there's, a, there's a show so there's these two twin doctors okay uh the Tolucans, and they do this show called twin institute so they, they get a whole bunch of identical twins and they do tests right like comparison tests so one of the tests they did with these set of twins was one was they were they were with, by surprise given an exam both sets of twins one was allowed to keep their phone next to them on the desk the other one had their phone confiscated mm -hmm. the ones who had the phones confiscated uh averaged i think five iq points better mm -hmm. in that 
uh, it was to do with that, you know, the phone more stealing our attention. So mm-hmm. when your mental capacity is like drawn away from what you're actually doing, your task, you know, being mindful, doing at hand, then you kind of, you, you do reduce your IQ. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that was quite fascinating. And uh, I think, sorry, I digress completely, Ooh, but no, on, no, man. no, but yeah. Uh, but it was an important point to understand. And I think this is why also it's a good idea to get away from the phone and just do it actually on paper for change mm-hmm. as well. Um, yeah. And don't get me wrong, like self-development, like when it's really done properly and you're really overcoming your demons, like let's just call them demons. It is at, like, it's very rewarding, but it is a very painful process. And I say it's only for those who are willing to push mm. through um what yeah what they're used to basically oh, but it's like anything else right so going to the gym you have oh. to commit you could there are people who go to the gym once a month and think it's going to develop them but it's not you have to like be there every day training your body your mind it's not just body though your mm-hmm. mind gets trained to the gym as well um and so yeah right it's absolutely everything you know you have to commit right i mean mm-hmm. i started spanish at the beginning of the year and i hardly knew any all i know knew was that was about the only thing i knew and now i know quite a few words and stuff as well so i'm getting there at the duolingo app but if anyone wants to use it it's a free app and you can use it to learn any, a lot of languages it's a good way of learning in spare time contradicting what i was just saying about getting away from your phone but it is just a really good app the way it teaches you it's really good mm-hmm. there's a lot of repetition so it does kind of keep it in there Mm-hmm. Another thing really good for your brain, mute all notifications. Oh, God, you Literally, know, I've been saying yeah. that for ages as yeah. well. Tip, yeah, tip number yeah. one for your brain. You know Sil- keep that phone on silent, um, except for your mother, obviously. Yeah. Uh, in my case. But, yeah. but you know, there's so much you can do for notifications. Like WhatsApp, you can mute groups. I've muted most groups except mm-hmm. two or three with family. Most of my WhatsApp groups are muted now. Facebook is the one I've got to improve at, get a lot of those. But... Um, uh the the other thing as well that i was showing someone the other day that you you you, you know our iphones have a do not disturb mode mm-hmm. so that means you you know people are worried they won't get the important things or miss a call from their mom or something but if you if you have your family and your favorites on your phone even if you put it on do not disturb mode you won't get the notifications but mm-hmm. if there's an emergency you will get the call through you know one hour a day just putting your phone and do not disturb especially at night as well mm-hmm. you know we allow ourselves to get so disturbed don't we and i think it does have an impact on our brain so uh, i'm quite curious and i wanted to kind of just ask a bit more about your story as well because you know i, I personally from what i've heard and what you've told me it's just i think it's fascinating um because you know can you t- go into a bit more detail about your actual condition and kind of you know how you thought or how you got to the stage of thinking that I could get better. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, um, where do I begin? So, yeah, um, my story is basically, yeah, my childhood was pretty much everything would associate with a child with autism. Uh, that means, you know, yeah, just every aspect it made like I had a brain that did not serve me. Let me just tell you that it made every aspect of my life difficult. And a lot of it was, yeah, I would say a very frustrating childhood. Um, and it goes to show, like, as well, like, I promote was, um, like, there are a lot of people, like, where, you know, like, I was a child, I would say I had everything going up. I had a loving family, everything was just loving, but because of that, like, because of those cognitive difficulties, it was pretty miserable. Like, um, yeah, just basic things. So, like, social cues was never taught them, never picked up on them. Eventually, you know, I thought, okay, if I need to sort of, like if I want to survive I have to like somehow just put myself out there a lot of unfortunately a lot of the things that changed me as well was being bullied so um I'll give you like just like like basic example would be like okay um let's say if I walk into a room I didn't if I didn't greet someone they would just be like oh this guy is you know he's retarded he can't say hi like and then you know I'd probably get slapped or once or twice by like someone in the room like oh he doesn't say hello so then when i was being slapped like like associating a lot of pain with not saying hello you can pretty much make damn sure i made an effort to try and you know um sneak like articulate stuff when i was with people just to avoid that sort of pain and also there was a lot of stuff like in school um yeah a lot of like pain in this in the sense that like there would be like someone like let's just say there was a bunch of kids who always used to punch me as hard as they could uh, because they no, because they thought it didn't hurt me. Like, because you know, part of my condition is that you know we're hardly expressful. Like, we hardly make an expression. So someone would punch me as hard as they could, and because like I would just freeze, they would think, "Oh my God, it doesn't hurt him." What would they? What would they do then? They would call the That's bigger horrible. kids from like 
yeah, year 10, year 11, they'll be like, come, punch this guy, man. I swear, nothing happens. And then it was just pretty much like a hobby wow. for them. And, um, and then, yeah, like, so then let's just say I had enough pain growing up to want to change. And um, a lot of, there is a saying as well in personal development that, you know, if the pain is not great enough, you will never change. And that's one way to explain like sort of my early days of changing. But what shifted it later on was, pr was probably um, just the m misery upon misery upon, you know, not being able to do anything that my peers or anyone my age was doing. And then, um, and then, uh, and also like the people who you would expect to be there for you just weren't like, for example, um, I told my doctor, you know, like, look, I want to get better sort of thing. But then he would just laugh at me. He would be a bit yeah. And then, yeah, and then eventually, yeah, so then, but, um, yeah, so I was always, I always had that mindset, you know, just to improve, just sort of to survive. Like, I would just say survival was the biggest motivator, yeah, because let's just say I wasn't, like, yeah, living a very good life. What's interesting, though, about the story mm -hmm. is that you thought you could get better. Mm hmm you, there didn't seem to be any time at which you put a point you didn't think you could. Oh, there were many days. Like, yeah, oh, really? yeah, hey. yeah. But um, but I would say um, I would say what really, yeah, what really switched it was probably just doing brain training because mm -hmm. you can actually see yourself like changing pretty much on a weekly basis. So it was yeah. just yeah, going from yeah, I would say even um, yeah, if yeah, my parents would also tell you some emotional stories about you know the first time I could say, wow, I'm actually processing what you're saying to me yeah. before I would just hear noise, you know, like. Just going through little shifts like that. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just sort of making, just creating whatever you could. Like they need different sort of targets. Like, you know, for me, if one thing bugged me, I would like persistently like, got it, you know? Because um, if someone would say, hello, how are you to me? I will just be like, Whoa. but now it's like, I would literally stand in front of a mirror and go, fine, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? you know? Like, just like trying to articulate, just trying to, just so I wouldn't get bullied. Like, oh yeah. my God. Like one of the things that kids in my school used to say was, you know, oh my God, Shami's so, f his mouth is so fat that he can't speak sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, because I just couldn't articulate when I was younger. Jeez, yeah. yeah. So, That's horrible yeah. as well. That's the worst type of punishment to go through as well, especially if you can't articulate your pain mm -hmm. or what you're going through. It's mm -hmm. just, it must have been hell. Yeah. As in, but honestly, looking back, I honestly think like, you know, there's, and everyone in any sort of hardship, they sh you should always look at your learnings, basically. It's just what you learn. Yeah, you're on a never-ending learning journey. And, um, you know, whatever the universe gives you, pretty much, um, if you pretty much, yeah, if you overcome it, yeah, it's... So was it, was so, it uh, would you say it was more a gradual kind of transformation for you? Or did you have a moment of breakthrough as well as you're going through this process? I would just say um, um, major breakthrough was probably... Um, yeah, probably. Honestly, yeah, I'm not promoting myself, but yeah, it was probably the training. Like, it was training. Um, yeah. So and also, you... human behavior always fascinated me as well. Like, you know, like probably natural born psychologist. Like, day one in the playground in school, like, I was there. I didn't know where I was, why I was wearing uniform, or why, why there were other kids here my age. Like it would obviously the concept of school would have been explained to me, mm. but my brain just would never have registered it. So I was just there and like just observing people. And I was always wondering, like, what is going on in their head? You know, like that was just <laughs> something that people puzzled watching. me. You, you know? learn a lot by people watching that. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. Because actually, no joke. And because like, I can pretty much, yeah, suss someone out now because I spent my whole life not participating, just sort of being there as an observer, not a participator. So yeah, you get a different dimension of, you know, learning as well when it comes to people yeah. or the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And then you, so you had a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've had many mentors, yeah. But the yeah. person you've learned, the person whose course you teach now, when did you come across him? Okay, I've only met the guy a few times, but like, uh, yeah, as in, um, there's a lovely couple in Dubai um, who used to use um, the concept, they, it was a brain training center there. But now they're my mentors, and then the founder of our concept is in America as well similar story to me he started out as an optician so what happened is he would fix people's eyesight and like you know he would give kids like sort of glasses they could read they could like see better and he's thinking okay if, like, if they can see better why can't they learn better and that sort of sparked off a whole sort of 
yeah, a boatload of research, and that pretty much became his life mission. Mm. And yeah, so yeah, so this thing, yeah, so the concept we do is it's yeah well renowned in the states and yeah, yeah in the world now as well. We've got about roughly there's roughly eighty centers worldwide as well. Wow, that's yeah, not bad. Not bad at going at all. Eighty locations, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and so then you're actually right, so you get to this point now you start your training and then did you kind of were you kind of were you self-aware about you know improving and kind of getting better and you know start to mm -hmm. pick up on more did it do you find as well that it helped your kind of your social interactions as well mm -hmm. so it kind of would you say full spectrum yeah as in like because okay once my brain got enhanced and I thought okay let me so then that was like a sort of avenue to sort of learn more so then when I couldn't read, but then, like, you know, the first book I read was very motivational as well. And then the second book I read was obviously The Secret. So, like, so it was just um, being fed this sort of information and sort of implementing it. Also, um, yeah, so I would say, yeah, learning. And then also, like, okay, my brain got better. But then I thought, okay, um, you know, I then use my new brain ability to try and learn communication, just try and learn to speak a bit more, try and how to listen a bit better. So, yeah. Like, so I, long story short, yeah, my brain got enhanced and I thought, okay, I have to literally learn life again. So I, I tell people this all the time. My life started when I was 20 years old. Mm. I did not, well, I hardly had a life before 20. <laughs> and you are now old? <laughs> 26. 26, so yeah. not that long ago as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but that's that's incredible. Hold on, you're, uh, you're, uh, your mama sent in the question, actually. So what helps so is you want to re read, articulate. Let me just read that thoroughly. Uh, the brain training is what helps Shami to be able to read, articulate, and take all things around him. We suddenly had a child that was starting to participate in life. Interesting. She's so cute. Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love that. I'd be doing the same. Well, hi, yeah. mom. Um, yeah, yeah. No, inc incredible. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, have you had yourself tested in terms of where you're at now and where, you know, as opposed to where you were? So, what was your IQ measured at and what is it now? Okay. I would say overall, there was about, I would say, uh, when I first got measured by a mainstream psychologist, I was showing roughly a variation between age seven and age 12 in areas now um last time i checked it was pretty much yeah 18 across the board and this was about last time i checked was when i was 20 years okay, cool. know. excellent yeah. but what about according to your your tests in in your center i haven't done one in ages oh, really so, yeah. oh. and i'm scared to actually yeah because, <laughs> no, it's quite yeah it's demanding yeah. what i would say actually like we were just out uh, yeah. as a group of friends uh, probably uh, probably about a year ago or so and um uh, we were talking about this, and you kind of did a memorize a list of mm -hmm. things. I think we did twenty, and you rem he memorized it quite easily. You know, like mm -hmm. the old school test. He just said to us, "Write down twenty random objects," and he'll memorize them. Mm -hmm. So we just read them out one on one. Maybe I should do this test again today and see how you do. Oh well, yeah, but then yeah, <laughs> it's just um, now there's a lot of things like yeah, people might be like, ah, it's fixed or oh no, it's like no, 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 no. You I'll can get someone from the audience to yeah. I don't know, or, well, I mean, how uh, do, how they know I'm not looking at it? Exactly, it's fine, I reckon. exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I. Th well, I, I just actually, if anyone watching right now wants to send me a random list of 20 things, if not, I'll write it down on a notepad. Um, yeah. uh, uh, send it to me on uh, Facebook Messenger. Yeah. I'll check it over on my iPad. Yeah. Uh, um, we'll do the test, guys. Mm -hmm. The way I'm navigating my life now, I only really need to focus on three things at a time. Like, tw I haven't done 20 in ages, so it'll be, <laughs> it'll be quite yeah overwhelming but yeah as in, i wouldn't no, mind doing it but, but the thing is as well the most important thing there is the fundamentals are the same right yeah. no, so it doesn't matter if you're doing three or if you're doing 20 like you know like yeah. you did there mm -hmm. the the principle is still the same because you know once you've kind of trained yourself and you know the concept then to then you just got to mm -hmm. apply it yeah you probably need a bit of practice right but you mm -hmm. know it's like riding a bike i'm sure that once you kind of because you already know it you know even if you step away you'll probably pick it up again very quickly correct you yeah, pretty thing. much. Yeah. yeah, I knew it. He's just After an modest. hour or so. Yeah, he's, like, he's, just, be, he's just being <laughs> modest, I tell you. So when, when I went to uh, Shami's office and stuff, he, again, like we said, we did it a bit more for fun. But um, you got me uh, doing some of the tests that they do at their centre. Yeah. But you got me, he got me counting while I was doing the Rubik's Cube. Yeah. Um, doing something while I was juggling. I think we've still got these videos on your page somewhere. Mm. Um, and there were all sorts of weird tests. How did I fare, by the way? I didn't even know, actually. I didn't even ask you. What's that? How did I, how did I do? 
I'm pretty good compared to yeah anyone else who was I mean, being, yeah, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> compared to most adults yeah oh that, well, that's <laughs> good that's good cool. to know actually yeah because yeah. I've, I've always been fascinated with like silly things right mm -hmm. so what what gets me is like, like I, I'm not telling you this I'm you know just to impress you but yeah the stuff I gave him like I would never dream of giving it to someone within like an hour of having them in my office no, it was pretty, <laughs> uh, pretty I, insane. apparently I think I did okay yeah, not too bad yeah. uh, but uh, no I've always been fascinated by um Little things like, uh, like I got into magic when I was younger. I was a magician, professional magician for a mm. while, and I did, um, uh, you know. Then I started doing juggling, Rubik's cube. But what always fascinated me, I was in it the day that I spun a ball on my finger in years, and I used to be really good at it. And I just picked one up and I did it and filmed myself doing it as well. So mm. I wanted to, you know, be able to prove that I did it. And you know, again, within thirty seconds, I was back to being able to do it, even though I haven't picked one up for. 10 years maybe five maybe slightly less than that mm -hmm. um and um uh, and yeah i've always been fascinated by the mystery of things like something even something silly right now like i mean i have no clue how uh, a plumber works you know how they like to me what mm -hmm. they do is magic almost right so that sort of stuff anything that seems like a mystery to me attracts me to mm -hmm. it to try and figure out how it works mm -hmm. And, you know, magic was no exception and so forth. And so I've always tried to plunge my brain into learning different things. And um, I think I may have mentioned this to you as well. Now, without trying to drop everything, I'll just grab something over here if I can. I'm going to try not to um, destroy my setup if I possibly can. Uh, let's get this as well for later. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I'm coming back, folks. Don't worry. This is, this is me being uh, impromptu. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. so yeah so i remember uh i just wanted to share this story this is the only reason i picked it up was um when i was uh younger i was not studious at all i was not uh, like i hated school i hated being at school i never enjoyed learning but now i love learning mm -hmm. but um for one of the first things i that got me interested was i saw this budweiser advert it was on tv and we had it on um we'd recorded it by mistake on old VHS, if anyone ever, if anyone remembers that, mm -hmm. I'm sure the older ones, the older <laughs> owners, will remember that. Uh, and and it was basically a Budweiser advert. A guy on the train, and he had a pack of cards, and he was doing all sorts of fancy shuffles. And I learned this just by watching the advert over and over again. And I would just watch it and learn it and watch it and learn it. And I literally rewound that. You remember the old? You probably, did you ever see a VHS? You might have done. Yeah, definitely. Of course, yeah, right. You probably probably would have seen it. I had to rewind it, watch the advert again, rewind it, watch the. Advert. I must have done it at least a hundred times. And then I kind of, you know, just kept just. I learned and actually he got there. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of like just just me in terms of like that. And even when I see you do your little do do your little thing, the memory thing, I thought to myself, wow, this guy's like mm -hmm. to me that was like magic, you know, yeah. being able to just memorize a simple list. I know yeah. it's only a really rudimentary thing, but still mm -hmm. it's quite impressive. Yeah. Um and I think it's incredible. But obviously there's so much application to it as well. So can you can you share any examples of I know you did one with the army person, but anyone else just generally day to day people who've done your training and yeah. found real benefit in it? Yeah, I'll give you one of, um, all right, um, picture a kid, um, a severe dyslexia, nine years behind his reading age when he came to us, he was begun to use your teas. So um, this is quite a good story, actually. So, um, so he used to come to us, um, he used to do double sessions just to try and get the time done before he would go to his GCSEs. And um, so he came to us. Like he did a brain training program, went for his GCSEs, didn't feel them, but asked when he was to fail. Um, he was nine years behind his reading age. He's roughly, I would say, when he finished, well, he was measuring about on par with his age. So a nine year gain and roughly just 100 hours of brain training or so. And then what's even more fascinating is that he now works with us. <laughs> so, um, ah, yeah. Nice. yeah, so if you come to our center, yeah, you might be trained by someone who was nine years behind his reading age. And yeah, he he would make giving be giving you a mental sweat now as well. So, Hi. Yes, yes. Uh, how old is that individual now? About eighteen. Wow, that's 20, incredible. Yeah. yeah, he's like a like a little like apprentice, like yeah, See, working. What I mean, like what fascinates me about that is that uh, about that story is that you know there are people out there who may have the same condition as him, or they have a child or something who's got the same condition who may be told be. T they're probably getting told by someone, oh, they're dyslexic, that's it. Mm -hmm. Game over, that's what they're stuck as, and that's it. Yeah. Whereas 
it doesn't have to be the case. You know, you can, mm -hmm. if you have, a, you can make improvements. You may not be at a, you know, a peer level intelligence, but you could still improve yeah. and improve your chances of, and like you said, right, getting a job, you know, improving your quality of life, uh, you know, you know, how people can treat you different even as well. You know, they, they some people might think, oh, they're mm -hmm. stupid. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's horrible to be seen that way. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I know. I mean, in some areas I may come across as intelligent, other areas I'm a complete, complete wet rag. So I know what it feels like when people, you know, think that you're stupid in some way, shape or form. It's not very nice. But, you know, these people that have come to you have been given that chance, but there's probably loads out there who are still in that boat. Mm -hmm. who just think they're stuck yeah. and I don't think they are and I obviously you mm -hmm. know your proof but yeah. also you the, do it daily yeah the hardest thing is you know trying to give someone like that a new belief a new identity because they have to literally um don't forget like they've they've changed they've turned their life around a lot in like just a few months but the people around them still see them as that old person so then yeah they get they have to adjust as well. So basically, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my God. yeah that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even think about that as well. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> such a good point. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So can you just give some maybe examples of some of the tests you might do on a day-to-day -day basis? So someone like, you know, they walk into your office, what's kind of like, how would you test them initially? And, or in fact, not even initially, I think we sort of touched upon it, but how would you start the process then? Give an example of a test you would do to someone to help improve their memory, for example. Okay, so like the test... A test is just we see where you are. So like we're like, okay, like what's your maximum hold on your short-term memory? So your working memory is basically the things that you can take in in your current awareness. Uh, let's say, I don't know, if you're at school and you're copying from the, from the board, that's your working memory. Or if you're taking down a phone number, that's your working memory. So anything in your current awareness. And we also measure long-term memory. How we measure long-term memory in our centers is basically outside of your current awareness. So bringing something from outside the room into the room. Uh, if that makes sense. So um, long-term memory can even be measured as, you know, something that happened an hour ago. Or, for example, if you're doing something and then something else comes up, but then do you remember this? Are you able to retrieve it? It's that sort of measurement as well. Yeah. And when we measure memory, like, we're not asking, um, you know, do you remember your 21st birthday? I'm sure you do, but I'm talking about more of the day-to-day -day stuff, like the important things, like... Um, how like are you losing phones keys wallets like this sort of stuff or um if, if there's like an important task to do do you just complete does it just slip your mind that that's the sort of thing where we feel like yeah we definitely need to improve it sort of thing but um we just give you like uh standardized tests basically to measure yeah short-term and long-term memory and also all of the other skills make a kind of um, bottleneck effect on it. For example, if someone's attention is weak, that means their attention is weak, they couldn't focus enough to make it a memory, if you know what I mean. So a lot of your memory is, to do with, or is also to do with the amount of attention you're paying in a given moment. For example, uh, if a teacher is explaining something in school and um, it comes up on a test and like you were just sort of not really in the room at the time, it's not, yeah, so it could just be an attention problem as opposed to a memory problem. So we figure out what it is that actually is causing your day-to-day -day struggle, wow. if that makes sense. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Oh, and uh, um, sorry, go on, no, another go on. one, do. another example is someone's processing speed. For example, if you're in a lecture and um, the teacher is on, let's say, um, bullet point number five, you're still processing bullet point number two, that processing speed is going to hinder your learning as well. Which it, So it might just come out as, oh, okay, this guy doesn't remember stuff. So, but really, he didn't process the information fast enough in order to, you know, um, put it, like, get, put the information into his knowledge bank to retrieve it for later. Yeah, so you could be on bullet point number one, your teacher could be on bullet point number 20. Yeah, so all these things correlate. So we just measure all of them just to make sure we target the root of your day-to-day -day struggles, uh, basically. Is that is that necessarily a mess, memory and attention thing, or is it comprehension as well? Okay, if you want to throw that in there, there's yeah, your what we found is your visual, your visualization or your visual processing correlates a lot to your comprehension as well. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, we, oh my god, I could go on for until next Christmas <laughs> on, on like the the way each skill relates to your life and yeah. That, like uh, yeah, just how they relate basically. So.
<laughs> so what is, right, I mean, I know you've only been doing this recently, so, mm-hmm. you know, for, for within your know, five years and so on, but what is one common problem in modern day society that you see a lot of? Is there something that you find across the board? You know, I think people's general attention spans are getting weaker um, by their work uh, short-term memory first. That's the first thing that suffers, like what we found out is, yeah, during the gadget era. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have to admit, like, uh, I do find that I sometimes kind of remember what I did last weekend. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and even sitting here right now, I... I want to pay attention to you and I'm what, you know, it's not that I'm not interested in what you're saying, mm. but obviously mine can wander very easily. Mm-hmm. Like just for a split second, I don't know why I looked at a book over there on the shelf or whatever. It's just like your, your our minds are so easy, so fickle, you know, anything could take away his attention, but especially if you've got a gadget there that's got all sorts of funky mm-hmm. colors and all sorts going to take your attention away and steal it away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but if if someone is not able to come and see you, right? So let's all right, yeah. let's throw it out there. What can they do to start as a process? Even if they're not, even if they're obviously they want to come and see you at some point, but before that, they want to start doing something to improve yeah. their yeah. attention, their memory. What can they do? Their attention and memory, I would say, yeah, um, I would say get disciplined. Discipline is a major, yeah, it's something you can do by yourself, um, sort of on a daily basis. Discipline in the sense of you know. Um, smash out a gym session and if your attention was like mine like a few years like I would say eight years ago you would probably be on set three but you haven't counted that many you probably like how many sets have I done so really discipline yourself like make that uh, your intention is really powerful as well so just set the intention that you know I will remember how many sets I've done sort of thing and I will try and remember this whole workout um, like by you know visualizing it, doing as much as you can. If you're used to remembering the next three exercises ahead, remember the next four. Push one beyond your paradigm each time. Another good game you can play with people is, I would say, a fruit game. Like, um, like you say a fruit, your son, your friend says a fruit. You then repeat his fruit, add another fruit, and then by doing that process, oh, you're improving yeah. your short-term memory. And then even there, push it one beyond your max until you're comfortable doing one beyond your max as well. Ah, oh, that's of, a know. great game. I love that. We'll play that in a minute, actually. We'll give mm-hmm. it a go. See, it's, as a test of both of us, right? We'll mm-hmm. see how this goes. This is going to be disastrous for me. But um, uh, actually, funny enough, you should say that because, uh, as you know, I'm training for the marathon. And um, I've been researching and looking at a lot of endurance athletes and what they do, how they prepare themselves and how they get themselves ready for the battering that your body takes in a situation like that. And it was quite an interesting one. I didn't remember, I don't remember the guy's name, funny enough, but it was, a, it, you know, I've only seen the talk once and it just saw it briefly yesterday, but he was talking about that, that process of mindfulness, but also uh, centering your attention on now. So he went to this guy who's kind of like just a, camp, you know, not an endurance athlete or such, but he went, he wanted to do some long distance runs. So he went to see uh, this guy who coaches people to do endurance events. We're talking like 100K plus runs, mm-hmm. right? So long distance, really long mm-hmm. distance. And um, and he was teaching him one of the key techniques was, first he said, you know what, just count your paces. See if you can get to 10. And he said, like, you know, and, you know, the gentleman giving this talk was saying, you know, it took him about a month to get to 10 mm-hmm. without losing his attention. Mm-hmm. So to count his steps while he was running, to not lose his attention, to get to 10, took him a month. I'm sure. Mm, yeah, and that's um, the first building block to building someone. Yeah, from let's just say yeah. uh, an infant age, for example. If you give like the modern day three year old, um, okay, count to hundred. It's like he can do that. It's like okay, but does he go one, two, three, four, five, like, and then just wanders off and it comes back and then you know what I mean? So it's mm. just staying on it, and then how you can improve your attention is always slowing down. So for example, if you're used to going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like just losing yourself in that impulsivity. Slow it down. Just look at, uh, get an infant, for example, let's say a toddler, just go one, two. You know what I mean? Like just slowing it down uh, increases your attention span a bit more. You have to be a bit more aware. It encourages awareness. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to try this as well. Actually. <laughs> I, I only saw it literally, I think it was yesterday. Um, but I'd already finished my run when I saw this video. So I thought, okay, right, next time I do my run, which would be tomorrow or Thursday, whatever, I'm going to try this out, see see how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that, that's okay. So that's a good step. So anything else that anyone else can try at home for themselves to start 
boosting their brain power, memory, attention, anything like that. I love that game idea. Mm-hmm. And anything anyone else can do, say, on the move, while they're going to work, or just at home, making a cup of coffee, what else can they do? Obviously, like, but it's a bit obvious, but I would say meditation. So really, um, yeah, center your attention. Um, there are many guided att- uh, meditations online, so there's no excuse, really. Um, everyone should be meditating. Like, the amount of benefits are endless. Yeah. And, yeah. Actually, there's a lot of research into that as well to show that meditation improves your memory, concentration, mm-hmm. everything across the board as well. Yeah. And, of course, lowers your stress, lowers your cortisol, lowers, you know, just increases the, the good chemicals in your body as well. So mm-hmm. it's like a, it is across the board. Mm-hmm. So, um, so but, yeah. But be careful with that. You might get too blissed that you don't get <laughs> much done. So there's a balance as well. Everything <laughs> in life is a balance. Yeah. You know? so. I, I don't, I'm not sure anyone's at risk of that, but yeah. who knows, maybe, right? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> like sometimes, like, yeah, like, actually, yeah, to be honest, it's quite ironic that you do sometimes get a lot more done when you are relaxed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, no. It's that, yeah. no, it's true. I find mm-hmm. that uh, when I'm in a relaxed state, oh my goodness me, my God, mm-hmm. every, so much more productive, get things done when I'm mm-hmm. tense. If I haven't, especially I think water's a big thing as well. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting at my desk, I've been doing it, sitting for hours. I haven't drunk enough water, my concentration mm-hmm. will be all mm-hmm. over the place. Yeah. Whereas if I've been regularly with drinking water, then much be- much better, mm-hmm. not perfect, but much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that that can make a big difference. Yeah. So Seriously, I- guys, relax because, yeah, oh, yeah, like stress really is it's a destroyer of your cognitive function. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Well, we're not gonna, I'm not going to do this today, right, because I've done that plenty of oh, times. Yeah. But, but let's do this little t- that game you mentioned earlier. Right? Let's, <laughs> have, let's have a go. I, yeah, let's do it. Cause I know I'm going to fail and flop, but no, I'm not going to say that, actually. No, no I'm not going to say that, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's try this game. See how far we yeah, go. We're going to try our best. All right, cool. Even me, I'm rusty on like three hours sleep, but I don't care. I'm going to. Yeah, so. <laughs> this is going to be fun to see how this goes. Yeah. All right, cool. Looking yeah. forward to it. Right, go for yeah. it. Let's do it. So you if start. I go, for example, apple, you then repeat apple and you add a fruit. All right, cool. So go for it. You start with apple, or are you going to start? Yeah, with so apple? apple. Okay, banana. So you got apple, banana. Uh, apple, banana, cherries. Okay, I'm so then I have to repeat bit. it. So I have to, I have to repeat it. So I have to go apple, banana, cherry, and I'll go for pineapple. Okay, so apple, banana, cherry, pineapple, and kumquat. I don't even know what that is. I'm, <laughs> I've lost. <laughs> what is that? Uh, it's. Uh, c- can someone please write a message and just explain what it is? It's. It's like a little. It, I was, do you know? What? I'm thinking of lychee. Actually, no. What is this? Can someone explain what a kumquat please is? Because uh, I've even forgotten myself. But. It, I'm sure it's similar to like a lychee, mm-hmm. but I could be wrong. So okay. someone explain it anyway. So there you go. Yeah, so apple, banana, cherry, pineapple, and kumquat. Okay, so and what's yours? Oh, yeah. So you know what? Watermelon. Okay, cool. So apple, banana, cherry, pineapple, kumquat, watermelon, and um, blueberry. Oh, wow. Apple, banana, cherry, pineapple, kumquat, watermelon. And, um, ooh, you got me. Ooh. Yeah, it slipped. Yeah. Let's we're going to keep on going, right? Blueberry. Yeah, blueberry. Oh, yeah, cool. one. Let's see how far we can mm-hmm. go there. All right, we're going to try yeah. this. Go for it. Yeah, my max on this is probably like seven. I, yeah, fruits is, yeah, it's a really good one as well. And That's also because you're trying, to, you're trying to encourage people to remember good things. Yeah. If, it's really easy to remember, okay, like 50 bad, like, headlines on the news sort of thing do you know yeah. what like when my wife and i would do road trips we would play brilliant car, like car game, not brilliant I'm exaggerating i'm just blowing my own trumpet but good car games but it's really interesting is that it, I, I noticed one thing that we play this game right where say if i say a movie you know uh, let's say we, we cho- choose a category first let's say movies mm-hmm. and let's say i said rambo then she would have to say a movie beginning with the letter O, so the last letter of the yeah, one sure. I just said, right? And we would That's do really that. good for your long-term memory. Yeah. yeah, and the funny Cause thing was, use, yeah, because yeah, the thing is as well, the longer the game goes on, you then you have to remember, and like, you know, you could then later on down the line say Rambo, and we'd be like, actually, no, that's been said. But the funny thing is, you don't realize you've been going for a long time Mm-hmm. And to remember that that piece of information was given is quite, you know, it's quite interesting to to mm-hmm. observe your own yeah. memory in action. Yeah, definitely. That you're picking up on these things. Yeah, and um, also, yeah, because you're, yeah, also, yeah. Well, the I, reason it got me is because I'm dealing with, I was dealing with something unfamiliar as well. That's, yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. You've reminded me of that game now, and I'm going to add that one into a repertoire. Next time me and my wife go for a bit of a drive, we're going to try this one to improve mm-hmm. our memory as well. I think it's a great brilliant yeah, one. Yeah, for sure. Do you still remember it, Billy? The fruits? Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, apple, banana, cherry, pineapple, watermelon. <laughs> it's that one that throws me off. <laughs> <laughs> the kumquat. 
Blueberry. Yeah. yeah. Did, did we miss one? Apple? No, no, I was meant to add to it. Oh, no, we meant, apples we at the beginning. One? Yeah, yeah, so apple, banana, cherry, pineapple, uh, kumquat, watermelon, blueberry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah, was, that was it. it, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, not too bad. Not too, yeah. I, think, I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> but honestly, such a good game. I love yeah. that idea. I'm definitely going to be mm-hmm. adding that in. Mm-hmm. So um, we're coming sort of now close to the end and stuff. And, and I think, personally, I've learned loads. And I, I think it's amazing to just see... Um, someone like you and your story of where you were to where you are now. And just think uh, from my, like just me just kind of spitballing and saying it as it is though. Imagine where you think you are right now, obviously you probably, Mm. you know, have some, I would, what we describe as normal functioning level of intelligence or whatever, you're not learning disabled. Uh, If you were to apply this stuff, imagine how much further you could go by Mm -hmm. just putting some of this stuff into practice by actually learning, training your brain. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, you could do a bit by yourself, but if you want to then go get some extra help. Oh, the last thing I was going to ask you was as well, that you, um, uh, one of the things you mentioned as well is that you helped, I mean, he helps whole, all sorts of people, but there was actually an astronaut in there as well, correct? Yeah, like, um, yeah, I was overlooking, yeah. So this is a guy, um, this was actually when I was doing my internship, so um there's an astronaut, I think he's on the Mars One mission, or he's up there somewhere now. <laughs> but, wow. um, no, so this astronaut, um, so um, like he, he would go around Dubai, like on it, he used to come to us on his motorbike. And um, if, he, like, if he was riding fast past like a billboard with a phone number, if he, if he looked at it and just blinked, he would just remember that, like, like whilst traveling, pretty insane stuff. And that guy, um, yeah, he's super sharp. Also been blessed to have like worked with uh, like like people from all sorts of backgrounds as well, including members of um, Dubai and Abu Dhabi's royal family, and um, other like um, people as well from abroad. Uh, so and also in Dubai. Uh, well, I mean that's just incredible. I mean I think it's you know and and this is the thing. It goes to show it could help. It doesn't matter if you're just uh, uh, an admin mm-hmm. assistant. You want to just kind of work on your brain a little mm-hmm. bit, just get a little bit better. Or if you're someone who's a CEO of a company, it could benefit yeah. you too as well. And I think yeah, uh, the, I think that's yeah. In London, like the main people are sort of lawyers, bankers, yeah, lawyers and bankers and doctors, yeah, doctors as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's amazing it's incredible yeah. so tell people how what's the best way they can get in touch with you so i have put his socials there which is the brain coach but you've also yeah. got the so, company one which is brain abilities right? yeah brain abilities yeah so they have locations in rickmansworth harrow and london baker street as well and um but i also have the brain coach which i made like as a personal page um it was basically um um yeah just to sort of have a sort of personal presence as well um because there was like a massive sort of like um, like stuff going out there and like uh, so I just thought the best way to like sort of um, overcome that would would just be to launch a page sort of so people could get in touch with me there so um, yeah so if you want to get in touch with me personally it's the brain coach yeah on uh, Facebook uh, on Facebook it's at the brain coach so all one word but on Instagram yeah. is the, the dot, dot brain dot, dot coach. coach yeah sure. so you're gonna have to remember that. Mm-hmm. No, but seriously, crush your goals in 2020. Yeah. Oh God, this. absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? I think it's so important to realize that you know there's a world of possibility in front of you, uh, and obviously, brain training is just one of those worlds of possibility. Mm-hmm. But just knowing that if you want to improve your concentration, being able to, you know, perhaps you're studying right now, perhaps you're doing some supplementary studying to support your career, uh, or even if you're a student and you get to watch this at some point or listen to this, um, and you want to improve your memory, improve your concentration, but also your cognitive ability as well, your reasoning, your actual kind of understanding, then as you said, it's to do with your visual, isn't it? So, you know, you, you're going to be able to improve all of this and therefore improve your IQ, mm-hmm. get a better yeah. score, but also so important, retain what you yeah. learn as well. Because uh, that's one of the things that, you know, I teach people is that, is that uh, so I teach this one thing which I say to people, which is the two master lessons of life. One is getting yourself to do things you, you know you need to do when you don't feel like doing it. Yeah. And the second thing is being recalling the tool you need when you most need it as well and being able to use it. So, you know, if, yeah. you, if you need meditation and you're stressed out, but you forget to use it, what's and, the point in knowing it? And if you train yourself to do the things which, you know, you know you have to do, but you don't like, if you train yourself to, just in that one little discipline, 
your success is pretty much guaranteed. So, oh, yeah, definitely. No, yeah. You know, like the, the example I give people. So I've been doing this for over a year now, waking up early in the morning, going to the gym uh, every day. You know, obviously I've missed a few days here or there with injury or illness or whatever. But like today, for example, just over five hours sleep maybe. And I woke up. My first thought was, oh, I should sleep. But my habit is getting me up now. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I worked hard to make it a habit, now my habit carries me through the tough days. And that's what's key, yeah. is when you made it a habit, that will help you so you don't have to exhaust your willpower on the days that it's particularly tough. But I, you know, I, I, th I think, but as you mentioned earlier, it's the work you have to put in at the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's the initial bit. You have to really yeah. do the grind in the beginning. And when it kind of is ingrained within you, then then that's where it pays dividends yeah. when you don't feel like doing it. And if you want dramatic changes, like, you know, the biggest irony about um, sort of like uh, training your brain is like you have to sometimes train yourself to forget. Like you have to train yourself to forget your old identity because mm, you oh want God, to reap yeah. a new one and you need to reinforce the new one. That's such a good so point just, as well. Yeah, such a good like, point. Like, uh, yeah, like that's why when people ask me about my past or just anything like it's like I'm trying to, you know, when you're trying to build something, you pretty much need to shed your skin. Mm. And like, yeah, it's basically, I, I literally say like, you know, I don't like, we're not, we don't mean it, but like, you know, in consultation, sometimes we're asking people, you know, are you willing, you need to die, you need to kill that old you to become that new you, yeah. basically. So, no, that's <laughs> tough. so true. And that's to reinforce so, so the new person. Yeah. But that's if you want, yeah, tremendous games. Like if, if you're as if you're like like hats off to you guys who watch this sort of stuff like on self development. But if you really are into, you know, if you're not in it just for the um, sort of information and you're in it to actually change, then yeah, you that is a big part of it. You have to, yeah, destroy that identity, create a new identity. Yeah. Yeah. And even simple things as well. Like we just when I said when we were about to play that game, I said, Yeah, I'm probably gonna lose this as well. We have this habit of putting ourselves down before we've even begun at something. Mm. Uh, and that is just, you know, killing some of your chance of kind of getting through this as well. So you have to start it, it's well, you don't have to, but it's a good idea to start with the right frame of mind. If you start with the right frame of mind, you're actually gonna then probably end up doing much better overall. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you're still gonna improve, but you're probably gonna do much better. So these little put down voices you hear in your head sometimes, you know what, that is like our biggest critic, that voice that's the yeah. loudest, and that's where we need to silence and increase the volume of the other voice. Yeah. And um, a lot of training as well, which we do, is basically how fast you can recover from a suppressor. You know, like, for example, like, something as simple, like, if someone's making a mistake in front of us, we're, like, they're dwelling for, like, two minutes, and eventually we're, like, no, that needs to be a quick recovery, you know? You make a mistake, it's how fast you recover, which is what gets you, like, sort of further down the line long term. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a lot in the culture as well, but, um, yeah, we need to shed those old habits, guys, you know? 100%. Well, Mr. Shami Kapoor, <laughs> like the boy actor, but of course, this is an original. Um, mm. It's a pleasure to have you. You know on. what's crazy? That guy, um, he, sorry. Yeah. No, go for him. No, he, um, <laughs> no, his name isn't really Shami Kapoor. It's yeah. Shamsher. I know, this yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 he's true. Absolutely. Yeah. But he goes by that. Uh, yeah. sort of, uh, and it's a, it's a toughie just a trying to get ahead on Google with that guy around. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> it's just like, no, but that's probably answered, isn't it? Yeah? Like, someone might Google him and see, oh, who's this Shami Kapoor? As well. I'm sure people should search Shami Kapoor, they're going to see your picture. Yeah, if you type in Shami Kapoor Dubai, Shami Kapoor UAE, yeah, it exactly, normally comes up. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, but yeah. No, no, so, uh, dude, thank you very much for coming no. all the way down and being thank on the so Feel much. Inspired yeah. podcast, man. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, honestly, do you know what? Reach out to this guy. No. Uh, connect I need to reach out for you for some dating advice. Oh, absolutely. I you am, can reach out to me. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, you can reach out to me for My dating, dating life is pretty much non oh, right, at the moment. Right, we're going to, after we yes. go off air, right? Yes. Yes. We're going to yeah. do my Mr. Miyagi thing as well, right? Let's go, let's go ready. No, but, uh, no, honestly, uh, seriously, though, reach out to this guy for mm -hmm. anything like that you want to, you concerned, even concerned about your memory and stuff. Go, go to see him. Go. I assume they can come to you for an evaluation or something like that mm -hmm. as well, right? Can they do that? Yeah, definitely. No, you can get in touch with yeah, brain abilities, brain abilities, or look up Shami himself. But with the brain a Z, coach. we're we're abilities with a Z because oh, that's it. because we deal with the A to Z of abilities. So yeah, struggling people, like thriving people, we help everyone uh, like with it. this. Basically, the number Beautiful. this is the number one tool you use on a daily basis. Yeah, I was giving a talk uh, in front of some students recently. I said, look, you know what? 
phones and everything upgraded every few months, right? But this, you know, like, you know, this is a piece of hardware you're going to have with mm -hmm. you your entire life and you can upgrade it constantly if you want to, mm -hmm. if you really want to. So with that, I will say buenas noches, uh, but it has been mucho gusto, a pleasure to meet you, man. Real, real pleasure. Thanks pleasure. for coming down, man. Thank you. And once again, you know, all the links are there as well. I will make sure that it's all shared and I update it with his links. Uh, and of course, uh, you can catch the podcast on, if you've just joined catch you on spotify apple podcast and google podcast and all the rest of the locations as well and we bid you good night have a good one take care uh, thanks. See you later. Yeah, see Bye. You. thank you thank you Daniel. awesome excellent right just finish off